Much to my delight, Souls-likes are an ever-increasing subgenre of game these days. With Dark Souls being one of my favorite games of all time, you can bet that an increasing variety of games similar to it is a dream come true. Typically, this subgenre is dominated by either indie devs or from software themselves. The first exception to this was Lords of the Fallen a few years back, made by Deck 13. And while it made several missteps and didn't quite capture what made Souls games so great, I still quite enjoyed the game for what it was and how similar it was to Dark Souls, albeit in only a few ways. So, attempting to learn from the mistakes they made with Lords of the Fallen, Deck 13 started making the surge in a sci fi setting this time. Being a fan of both Dark Souls and sci fi, I was immediately on board with this. And after playing the game, it's easy to see how much the developers have learned from Lords of the Fallen. I don't think it's by any means unfair to compare the surge to Dark Souls. And the biggest mistake Lords of the Fallen made was not realizing that Dark Souls is more than just the combat and the pacing. And while the search doesn't accomplish it fully either, it makes several huge steps in the right direction compared to Lords of the Fallen. The environments, for example, are much more meticulously laid out than before, with treasures and sometimes even entire areas of a map unavailable until later in the game, and tons of sprawling interconnected paths, shortcuts that lead back to safe zones, and even a ton of little treasures and locations, nooks and crannies and whatnot that you might not catch the first time around. The method of storytelling is also even leaning a bit more towards Dark Souls than it did before. And while it doesn't quite lean 100% in that direction, instead leaning a bit more towards traditional storytelling where the story is a bit more apparent, it still leaves you thinking and speculating by the end if you aren't able to put all the pieces together. But unlike Dark Souls, the pieces are all still there, mostly due to the audio logs found throughout the game. But honestly, I can't fault them too much for it since Miyazaki is an excellent storyteller and it's a hard act to beat. Plus, they even have a little bit of environmental storytelling, which is rare and I've only seen a few developers do. The combat is where we start to see the first intentional deviations from Dark Souls. Not just in the pacing of the combat, preferring a more fast-paced style kind of like Bloodborne, but also with the addition of the limb targeting mechanics. Parallel to what For Honor did with their combat where you can choose the direction you're attacking from, the Surge allows you to choose where you want your attacks to land. Selecting different parts and limbs on an enemy that have different strengths and weaknesses to attack, such as being able to aim for the head of an enemy who's not wearing a helmet, or if you see an enemy who's using an item you want, such as armor or a weapon, you can target the limb that it's attached to in order to sever it and gain the crafting blueprint for it. Usually through these badass execution sequences that really showcase how well animated this game is. Also, Darkness plays a huge role in The Surge, an innovation introduced to the franchise by Dark Souls 2 but also taken to heart here in the surge as well. It just adds so much to the atmosphere, having these pitch black areas lit only by your rig lights and those of your enemies. And next, while conversations with NPCs in Dark Souls has always seemed annoyingly one-sided to me, the surge changes this by adding Bioware-style conversation options to all the NPC dialogue. While this is evolving into its own subgenre, it is still a subgenre of RPGs, and an important element of RPGs is role-playing. And one of the best tools you can add to a game to enable that is conversation options. It's something I've wanted to see in this type of game for a long time. And on that note, while unfortunately the game does rely a bit more heavily on cutscenes to tell its story than Dark Souls does, thankfully the cutscenes it has are really well done. The quality found in these cutscenes is perhaps even on par with Halo Wars, perfectly delivering the emotions they intend to deliver. And lastly, with any Souls-like replayability, is a must, so having good New Game Plus features is important, and New Game Plus in The Surge is fantastically done, not only with the addition of incredibly tough enemies that aren't there in your first playthrough, but also by upgrading all your existing crafting recipes retroactively beyond what was even possible in your previous playthrough, encouraging you to continue upgrading and building your character instead of stagnating with a complete build, which is unfortunately a problem all too common in Dark Souls, so I'm happy to see it addressed here. One thing I found unfortunate about Lords of the Fallen was that they decided it was going to be a single player experience only. And one of the biggest problems I have with The Surge is that they've decided to stick with their guns on that, making The Surge as well a single player only experience. One of the biggest reasons I still play Dark Souls so much is for its online interactions. The seamlessly integrated co-op and invasions are part of what makes Dark Souls so great. 
So seeing them neglect to add such features in the Surge, while it's by no means the only problem with this game, it's the only thing really that's keeping it from being on par with or even better than Dark Souls, at least in my personal opinion. And this could have been forgiven if it made up for it by being the only problem with the game. For one, the Surge has no form of character creation whatsoever, which you would be able to forgive if you played as some sort of unique, interesting character. But the main character, Warren, is so flat and uninteresting, it feels like you were meant to create a character around him and project yourself onto that character, which is reinforced by the conversations. And while the story is delivered in a compelling way, the universe and story of the Surge itself isn't that interesting or unique at all. I guess it really is a testament to just how important the delivery of a story is. Now while this next one doesn't bother me too much since I've always enjoyed Souls more for the open world experience than the bosses. But one of the cornerstones of Souls-like games is its bosses. And the bosses in The Surge, while mechanically are incredibly fun to fight, are for one, way too few in number, counting a total of five bosses in the whole game. And with such a low number of bosses, the other problem is that it feels like they went with one too many just robots for bosses. Which is a flaw shared by the environments as well. Like the bosses, while there are a few that are different from the rest of the areas and feel new and fun to explore, the second area in particular is this rugged industrial area, which isn't a problem in and of itself, but the second area serves as this central hub that connects every other area together. And as cool as it is to explore the first time through it, you always find yourself coming back to zone 2, most times even for the main story. And as a result, it's likely you'll find yourself worn out on this rugged industrial sci-fi factory pretty quick. And oddly enough, the armor sets have the opposite problem. The first two or three that you find look really good, and it sets your expectations high for picking up some really badass security armors and shit like that later on. But all the armors you find after that are either over-designed or just plain dumb looking. So Fashion Souls players like myself are gonna have a hard time. And then there's the problem of how weapons are scaled. We have our five different weapon classes, which is fine, but whereas Dark Souls has different weapons within each class that scales with different stats, so for example, you can be a strength build and still try out, say, a curved sword weapon if you were to customize it to scale with strength or just find one that naturally scaled with strength. In the Surge, each weapon type has a proficiency tied to it, so the more you use that weapon type, the more proficiency you'll gain for it, and weapons with high proficiency scaling will scale with that proficiency so if you've been using say a heavy weapon for most of your playthrough and then you encounter an enemy where it's best to have a fast weapon and you want to have every advantage you can get against that enemy well you're gonna be hard-pressed to find out that your damage is gonna be severely gimped because you have a low proficiency with those faster weapons and I'm sure the idea sounded fine on paper but in practice it limits your ability to test out new kinds of weapons I just think it would have been a better idea to exclude proficiencies altogether and instead make weapons scale with your core power. And lastly, I'm getting really fucking sick of this, the developers did not work with the companies whose music they used in the game. If you're not going to work with the music companies to make sure they don't copyright claim content creators playing your game, then you need to compose your own music instead. That goddamn copyrighted song that always plays in the medbay got nearly all of my streams for this game claimed. And unfortunately, this is a trend that's on the rise, so I have to call out the developers when it happens. Ideally, if this game had a character creator and a way to fit it in lore-wise, I'd just prefer the multiplayer to work just like it does in Dark Souls. But since the game is so set on making you play as a set character and not customizing yourself, I see a better way to implement this in a lore-friendly manner. This is an idea I came up with while talking to a friend about how to implement co-op in The Witcher is to introduce a character very early on, even in the first zone, with the first medbay you find, who will follow you to each subsequent op center you find, and you can ask him to join you on your adventures, where you can either match make to find a random person or invite a friend, or you can choose to join another player's game where you'll play as that character. Of course the usual co-op rules would apply, while you're co-oping you get harder enemies, yada yada yada. And plus this would add another likable character to the story for you to rely on as a friendly face. Next there's only one weapon in the game where you can actually unlock its full potential. There's so many other weapons with alternate functions that either NPCs use, are mentioned in the item description, 
action or even sometimes both. Like the giant rivet gun that just serves as a blunt heavy weapon in the game, or the alternate flamethrower attack off of one of the boss weapons, all of which are completely unavailable to you despite being able to access the arcing electricity attack from the power axe. There are also dedicated flamethrowers and gas grenade launchers used by some NPCs, but given the large focus on melee combat in this game, I understand those not being usable. That all being said, it's time to come for the final verdict, and I'm getting a little sick of giving out this particular score, but it's applicable here, and that is an 8 out of 10. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it here, I fucking love this game. Now admittedly, there is a bit of bias towards this particular subgenre, so if you disagree, that's fine, this kind of game isn't for everyone. But if you're a fan of RPGs, I would definitely recommend it, and if you're a fan of Souls likes, this is a must own. While it still doesn't perfectly replicate the Souls formula, Deck 13 has absolutely shown a dedication to trying to get it right at least, making an infinitely superior attempt at the genre to Lords of the Fallen. Not to mention, it's literally the only sci-fi Souls like out there, which is a selling point on its own, but it even goes a little bit further by making its own unique twists on the genre. So if I wasn't already following Deck 13 after Lords of the fallen I definitely am now anyway that's all I have to say about this game like this video if you liked it subscribe if you like my channel but more importantly spread the word and if you really like my channel feel free to support me on patreon as well but for now that's it for this video I'll see you guys later